This is Arik Cohen, Program Manager on the PlayFab team, and I'm here to tell you about the new Facebook Instant Game support in PlayFab. PlayFab is a cross-platform, back-end platform for your live game that gives you access to rich game services, real-time analytics, and live operations tools to get your game to market quicker, as well as to enable you to engage with your players over time. We're excited to bring this PlayFab functionality to Facebook Instant Games as another platform that we support. Today, we're going to look at three different things. First, how easy it is to integrate the PlayFab backend into your Facebook Instant Game, how easy it is to run a simple live ops event. We'll configure a tournament, reach out to all of our players, send them a Facebook notification via our Messenger bot, get them to come in, keep track of the scores, declare a winner, and reach back out to the players after the tournament is over. In order to run this live event, you're going to need a Messenger bot. We're going to talk about how you can use Azure Functions and PlayFab to create those webhooks for your Messenger bot to be able to reach back out to your players in a rich, seamless way. Before we take a look at the experience that your players can create and the code that you're going to need to do it, let's talk about the different components. First and foremost is the game. That's what you're building, a Facebook instant game that's going to be incredibly fun, engaging, and reaches out to players over time and keeps them coming back to your game. It's a Facebook instant game, so in order to get information about your player, you're going to have to integrate with the Facebook Instant Games SDK. That gives you context about the player, the context and the particular game session they're running in, and gives you a secure identifier that you can utilize with other services. The service that you will want to use for your game services and that is PlayFab. You'll use the PlayFab SDK, a native JavaScript SDK, to, use, to get access to all the game services, things like uh, data about uh, storing data about your players, storing data about the game sessions, storing data and configuration data for your title, running serverless operations in the cloud, as well as the real-time analytics and live operations tools on top of that. As you build and create a great game there, you're going to realize that you need to be able to reach out to those players even when they're not inside your game. And in order to do that, you're going to need a messenger bot. To build that Messenger bot, you can use Microsoft Azure Functions as the Messenger bot webhook for your page. It'll take those messages, parse them, be able to interact with PlayFab, and forward those information to PlayFab where you can use the real-time analytics and the game player state and deliver custom messages back via the Facebook Graph APIs. We're going to take a look at what it's the experience that your players would have playing the game and that you would have both building as well as maintaining and running live operations within your game. A live operation really begins with reaching back out to your players and engaging them to come back in. Here we're using a messenger bot notification to send a Facebook notification that says, hey, the holiday tournament's starting now. We can click on play tournament and launch the game. This game is built using Phaser, but we have a JavaScript SDK for PlayFab that can integrate with many of the HTML engines that you would use for running your game. In fact, I can cl click over here, take a look at the PlayStream monitor, and see the real-time events as they're coming in. I can see the actions that were triggered, the Facebook messages that were sent, the webhooks that were sent, and then I can go and interact. Playing my game, we're going to run quickly here, get a nice high score, and boom, my game is over. I can now take a look again at my PlayStream monitor, and I can see that when the solitaire game result happened, we got the player statistics. I can drill into a particular player and really see all the information about them, like their statistics, their all-time best score, their tournament score, as well as the messages that we've sent to them, as, as even the webhook messages that have been received from Facebook for this particular player. We have rich capabilities to interact with all of the player data that we have here. We can take a look at the play stream, which is really the event history for the player, and see run uh, the behavior, as well as the player data that we're storing. In this particular case, the player data that's most interesting is the page-specific ID that we got from the webhook and from your messenger bot so that you can re-interact with that player. The next step in my live operation and in my tournament is to go take a look at my leaderboard. I can go click into leaderboards, 
take a look at the tournament best scores and see all the scores that are available. And I can end the tournament right now. I'm going to reset this leaderboard. And at this point in time, a notification goes back out to the players based on that tournament prize table. The tournament prize table takes a look at what the tournament best score is and takes a look at the person that's in the top rank and executes a piece of cloud script for them. This is a function that is being sent, used to send a notification back to the player. This cloud script allows you, via some simple JSON, to send that notification back. And boom, when we look back at the player's Facebook profile, they see that they've received a notification that said they won. This type of love operations experience really enables you to re-engage with your players and bring them back into the game and give them something to play for. Now that we've seen a little bit of the user experience that your players will have, let's take a look at the steps that are necessary to integrate the PlayFab backend into your Facebook Instant Game. We'll start in the PlayFab Game Manager portal. This is where you do all of the configuration of your game, as well as take a look at the runtime capabilities and actions that people are taking with it. To get started, we'll click on the add-ons and look at the Facebook Instant Games add-on. This is where you'll do the configuration using the information that you got from the Facebook developer portal. You'll be able to install that Facebook Instant Games and enter your app ID and app secret. This allows us to authenticate on the PlayFab services exactly for your Facebook Instant Game. What does the code to do this on, in the runtime look like? Let's take a look. This game is built in Phaser using TypeScript. You'll take a look at how we can use the JavaScript SDK from PlayFab and really start doing that integration. First, we'll skip through some of this animations that happen during the splash screen, and we're going to go take a look at how you do that integration. And it's really by going to the Facebook Instant Games SDK and calling get signed player info async to get the signature for that particular player ID. That gives you a signed piece of information that can be passed along for PlayFab for authorization. You'll create a Facebook Instant Games login request and set create account equals to true. This is important in order to be able to create these accounts on first login into the game. Once you've got that information back and you've created that login request, you'll call the PlayFab client SDKs login with Facebook Instant Games ID. That login call will take the request as well as a callback that's necessary for what should happen when that asynchronous request is finished. In this particular case, I'm going to pass the this.login callback as the function that should get called when it, when it is done. In that function, I can start doing other actions. For example, here, I update the display, display name and avatar so that the information stored in PlayFab is in sync with what is in the player's profile. This is all that's necessary in order for you to be able to start integrating your game with the rest of the PlayFab game services, real-time data analytics, and live operations tools. Now you can make your game even more fun and engaging. Now let's take a look at how to run one of those simple live op events, that tournament, using PlayFab. We're going to get started in the Game Manager experience. Again, the first part of this live operation is to reach back out to all of our players and send some automation to them, send them some information to get them to come back into the game. I'm going to click on the Automation tab here and see all of the cloud script that I have uploaded. This is all the JavaScript that I, as the game developer, have uploaded that can be run at a variety of different times. Here, I'm going to go look at the scheduled task in order to run that experience for the beginning of the tournament. I have a holiday tournament kickoff. I'm going to take a look at what's inside there. Here, this is a task that's going to run against all the players in a segment, and the segment is all the players that are available for messaging. So this can be a configuration of which players you want to send that information to. You have the ability to set a set of actions at that point in time. In this case, I'm going to execute that cloud script function. I'm going to send the Facebook bot message. That function, along with the arguments like the title, the image, subtitle that need to get sent, will get sent 
on each player that's in that segment and allow that code to execute. That will send back via a Facebook notification via the Send Message API. What does the code to do that look like? Let's take a look. Again, I'm looking here at the JavaScript that has been loaded up to PlayFab that can be executed at the time that you decide for your live operation. Here we've got the Send Facebook Message API. It takes a title, subtitle, image URL, and button title. The first thing that this title that this function does is go and look up whether the Facebook Instant Games bot access token, your page access token, is available in the title internal data. If it's not available, it'll throw an error. Then for each player, as it gets executed, it's being executed on a particular player, it's looking up the page specific ID for that player from the user's player data in order to make sure that we can send that along. Then it composes the JSON message body along with the parameters that have been sent and then calls the send message API. At this point, it takes the result from that and logs that. It also updates a player statistic so that you know how many messages you've sent to the player so that you can tune the experience based on the number of messages that have already been sent to that player. This same cloud script function can also be used to interact directly with a player. I can click into players, select Florence, the player that we had been interacting with, go and execute cloud script for that, and select the same exact function name, send Facebook bot message. At this point, I can enter the JSON and, do, and send the message directly to the player right now. I'm gonna set the title to be, this is a sample message, and then I'm going to click Run Cloud Script. This executes that same function. I see the result back from the Send Message API. And if I go and click over here into uh, Florence's uh, Facebook page, I see that I received that message. Now let's get to the next step in building this tournament. I need to take a look at the leaderboards that I have available. Here I see all the different statistics that are available here, including the Facebook Instant Messages sent since login that I've been executing in that cloud script. I want to drill into the tournament best score. I can take a look at the leaderboard that exists right now. This is right now set up to be manually repeating, but I can actually set up any of my leaderboards and statistics to reset on an automatic interval so that I can have daily tournaments or weekly tournaments that operate with no interaction from the developer in order to understand what happens when the tournament ends and when the leaderboard gets reset, I go into a prize table. Here I'm going to click in and take a look at the tournament top score prize table. Here this leaderboard is set to go against the tournament best score and I can create different actions that happen for different ranks. Here for the person that's in first place, we're going to send them the send Facebook bot message again of you won. Very simply, I can execute additional tasks like giving them additional currency or granting them items for winning their, uh, the tournament. All of this is set up via LiveOps configuration instead of baking that logic into your game client. As we've shown, it's important to have a messenger bot in order to be able to do that interaction and reach back out to your players and bring them back into your game and engage them with your live ops. Here we're going to show how to use Azure Functions as that webhook interaction and bringing the players in so you can do your live operations via PlayFab. The Azure webhook is actually quite simple. Here we're going to use a simple Azure function. In this example, I'm going to show you how you don't really want to have a lot of your business logic in your Azure function here. You're going to just use that to forward all of the messages to PlayFab, where you can use the live operations tools and all the data and analytics you have about the player to make intelligent decisions on how to respond to those webhook events. Here, we're going to use the PlayFab C Sharp SDK in integrating with my Azure function. The very beginning part here is actually pretty static. It's just uh, responding to all the pieces that are necessary in order to set yourself up as your initial Facebook instant message webhook. After this, I'm really going to go and get the JSON body of that webhook message. I'm going to go parse that into a JSON object, and I'm going to iterate over each of the entries inside there. 
As I look at each one of those messages, those gameplay messages, I'm going to pull out the page specific ID and the player ID of the Facebook Instant Game. It's important for me to be able to connect those two pieces together so that I can do interactions from the other side. I'll also keep track of what each of those messages are. I'm now going to take that information and look up into PlayFab by making a get PlayFab IDs from the Facebook Instant Game IDs. I'm going to take the Facebook Instant Game player ID and that will get translated out to a PlayFab player ID. I'm going to then take that and update the data of that page specific ID. Having that mapping of the PlayFab ID to the page specific ID allows me to be able to do a send message call from inside PlayFab. Then I'm going to send a player event where I capture the Facebook Instant Game webhook game message along with the page specific ID and the message that's associated along with it. I capture any errors that I have, send that along as a different message over to PlayFab so I can track if I'm having any issues. And with that, I just send a response of OK and my webhook is done. In this video, you've seen how you can get that signed player information from the Facebook Instant Games SDK, integrate that in a secure way with PlayFab so that you can securely identify your players and really utilize all the game services, real-time player analytics, as well as the live operations tools. But in order for your game to really be successful, you're going to have to be able to reach out and re-engage with your players. And you'll do that by creating a messenger bot. We've shown how you can use Microsoft Azure Functions and integrating with PlayFab to have a really rich experience there. We really look forward to seeing the great games that you're going to be able to create using Facebook Instant Games and PlayFab together.